Has anyone seen my partner? Who are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Who are you? Huh? What's up? I'm um, trying to figure there is an issue with one of my apps, something with the pencil injection. Oh, you know we have our talk. Right. Now. Oh, wow, it's now. I, I totally forgot about it. I was so deep into the code. That happens to me all the time. Um, but can I get a few more minutes just to fix this, to commit? Well, why don't you come up here and work on it together? All right, sounds like a good idea. Great. Right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Kapuna Heli Wong, and I live in Richmond, Virginia, and I help out on the Angular docs. Ah, wow. Thank you, Kapuna Heli. Well, um, so, yeah, let me just... Uh, Commit, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I will remove this. All right. So yeah. So uh, I'm Huri. I'm hearing a T-Rex hat. I have a bug in my app, uh, and I also write and blog for Angular in Depth. Any fans of Angular in Depth? Cool. You are all my fans. Thank you. And uh, I also work part time for BlackBerry. Yes, they still exist. <laughs> So, let's talk about climbing up injector trees. Right, injector trees, what are these? That's a very good question. <laughs> what is an injector tree? Well, luckily it doesn't have anything to do with needles or real trees. It's the way services get around in your app. Like, I know I define my services in my ng modules and then use them in my component. Isn't it supposed to be that way? Well, that's a way. Let's talk about uh, the basics. You can provide services via ng modules or components. So ng modules, that's what I do, but I didn't know you can also provide them via components. Isn't that cool? Is that a thing now? Yeah. All cool. right. I'm curious. All right. So let's take a look at this. You can provide your services and modules in the ng module decorator using the providers array. And here we've provided a kingdom service. Right, that's what they do. And uh, wait, wait, wait a second. I recognize this. They provided in was something new in Angular 6, right? Yes. But I still don't use it in my app. Am I the only one? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so why, what's the advantage of this method? Tree shaking. <laughs> Tree shaking? <laughs> So basically, it allows um, Angular to eliminate services that I don't use, right? That's right. Tree shaking, dead code elimination, yeah. Ivy. So, and then you use it in your component. Right, that's what I already do. Mm -hmm. So we just injected it here in the constructor. Yeah, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Should we build this out? Yeah, let's okay. stack blades, interesting. So I'm just gonna generate a, an Angular app. So you just created an Angular app like in three seconds. That's amazing. Isn't that great? Okay, so let's generate a new service. You can use the ng generate from within stack blades. Neato, right? It's getting cool every moment. I think like in five years, we'll be just like the dinosaurs extinct. The code will be <laughs> written for us. OK, so the first thing, I've just generated a kingdom service here. And let's give it a name. Right. How would we call our kingdom? Kingdom, that sounds magical. Hmm. How about we use an emoji? I love emojis. A T-Rex that goes with my hat. It goes. Let's go for it. All right. So then the next thing we need to do is head over to our app component. And I have some handy dandy snippets ready. And let's import our service. Nice. So you came prepared. You have snippets. Yeah, That's isn't that cool. cool? You know your job. <laughs> I practiced um, a little. All right, so we are in importing, and let me guess, we are now going to inject it into the app component, and then we are going to use it somewhere, probably. Um, yeah, so we are injecting it. And we now, yep. let me not hide the screen so they can also see it. Okay. Uh, so. Let's start editing and see some magic happen. Uh, it is magic. It updates. Wow. Um, so. Right now, we are just printing the kingdom, and that would print T-Rex, because we said the name of kingdom to T-Rex. Oh, I don't uh, apparently, with the upper letter K. Yeah. I, won't, I don't know why 
autocomplete doesn't also get it right always. Anyway, so yeah, so that's basically what I already know. We define components in the services and we define services in the modules and then inject them into components. Uh, at least it's not filter filter anymore. Um, and then that's what I already know, but I thought there is more to it. Yeah, you can define them in a, inside of your component. So let's go over here and try that out. Right, you mentioned we can do it also inside components. So how would that work? Well, let's go right over here and use our providers array. So we basically provide a new kingdom service in the app component. And I guess that the value you are going to put here will override the one we defined in the original service. Mm -hmm. So let's pick a new icon. What do you think? Brontosaurus, of course. We are in a dinosaur conference. Of course. Ready? Yay! So basically, you just defined a new value for kingdom service here and then used it within the same component. So it's cool that you can do that, but what's the advantage of that? What's the use case for that? Well, should we try making a child component? I love this generator. So yeah, let's use it as much as we can in this talk. OK, what should we call it? Uh, I don't know. Mushroom? Have you had mushrooms for breakfast? <laughs> Not today. Right, mushroom. <laughs> I like mushrooms. OK. So let's import. So let me guess, import, and now we are going to inject it. That's right. And then we are going to print the value of it in yes, the template. Like exactly. Uh, so we head back over to the, the template here, and we're going to use app. App mushroom. mushroom. So we're going to use it, a child component. So mushroom works, it right? Works, great. So let's put some stuff in there. So we are going to put a mushroom oh, emoji, mushroom obviously, emoji. because this is a mushroom component. So mushroom lives in the kingdom. In which kingdom does it live? So it could be either either brontosaurus. It is a brontosaurus. You you just gave away the answer just I like that. No, no. So yes. Yeah, so basically, what I see is that the kingdom you provided in the app component also affect the child component. So it basically gives us a way to communicate between components or directive that lives inside the same DOM tree. So a parent component can affect the child components and all the descendants this way. That's right. Interesting. So we defined our service inside of our component. And you, when you provide services in a component, they're available to their child components. Right. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know you can do that. And you have a child and parent, so this is where the tree comes into place, into play, right? That's right. So let's look at this diagram. So this is what we were just looking at, our app mushroom. And the injector was looking for the kingdom service. And it couldn't find it in app mushroom, so it had to continue on up the element injector tree, where it found the brontosaurus. Right, so that's the element injector tree. And I think you mentioned, uh, so we started with modules, right? So there is also something with modules tree? Yes, that's right. So we have ng modules and we have components. So right. What's the difference? Different injector trees. So there are two injector trees. Yes, there's the element injector, which is created by a component or directive, and Angular looks at elements as they appear in the DOM. And then there's the module injector, which is created from ng module from the ng module declaration. Right, and we have seen how the element injector works. But I wonder, in my app where I have this problem, I'm actually using content projection. And while it seems pretty straightforward when you have a child and a parent component, how does it work when you project something into your child components? Well, let's check it out. So. Let's. First, remember that these are two separate trees. So for content projection, right now we have in our little app, our app component, and then we have its child component, app mushroom. Mm -hmm. So we're going to create a forest component. We're going to also um, project some content, and we're going to include another uh, app mushroom. Because mushrooms grow in the forest. That makes yeah, total sense that to makes me. Sense, right? All right. So we'll have the app component inside a mushroom co a forest component, and the app component will project a mushroom into the forest component. That's right. so magical. Let's do this. Let's do it. So okay. uh, I think we need the new forest component first, right? So let's generate a new forest component. Maybe we should put some dinosaurs in the forest. Dinosaurs. 
<laughs> All right, and then let me guess. Oh, well, I have some styles I want to. You are going here. to style it, so it won't be the vanilla white. That's right. Cool. Okay, and then in our forest, let's yeah. get some content, and we'll say this is the forest. So this is the forest of kingdom name. We are going to print the kingdom name, and let me guess, you are now going to import the forest service into the forest, the kingdom service into the forest and inject it like we... Exactly, exactly. So start seeing a pattern there here. There is a pattern. It's all pattern. So... Oh, sorry. Um, and then I guess what we would see is basically that the forest is in the uh, kingdom of the brontosaurus because that's what we defined in the app component, and it will be a child of the app component. Yep, that makes sense. Oh, and you made it green. Made Thank it you green. for the styling. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so uh, how does it work with the content projection? So let's go back over here. Oops, right, sorry. over the template, over and the template. and let's give ourselves another div with a class of projected to use those styles. Oh, that's clever. So you are going to put uh, the projected content inside the white rectangle, so it will be very easier for us, very easy to, for us to see which content comes from the app component. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I have this already. And cool. And we can head back over to our app component. So now we are going to the app component, and we are going to project the content into the forest, right? To say inside the forest component. So this will go into the right rectangle. Wow, I love right. how fast this, like it's real live coding. Okay. Um, and then we have the mushroom. And all right, it, it makes sense. Everything lives in the Brontosaurus kingdom because that's what we defined in the app component. And that's like the parent of all these components. But I wonder what happens if we provide a different kingdom for the forest, will it affect the stuff inside the rectangle? Wow. Well, well, what do you think? What, uh, le let's, let's provide um, a different value for the kingdom in this. Which value are we going to use? Oh, I'm getting a little hungry. Another emoji? How about? <laughs> a snippet. Yes. All right, what do we have here? about pizza? It makes sense with the mushroom, so yeah, let's go for pizza. So what do you guys think? As soon as Capunahela will uncomment this line, are we going to see, we're obviously going to see a pizza um, in the granular rectangle. This is the forest, because we define it in the forest. But in the projected content, which comes from the app component template, are we going to see a brontosaur or a pizza? Who thinks pizza? Who thinks brontosaurs? Okay. I really admire the brave guy that voted for pizza. Who is hungry? <laughs> In a few minutes. So let's see. Show us the solution. Uh -huh. So both pizza and so everybody was right. Cool. It's both pizza, pizza and a brontosaurus. But why is that? Why do we get one of them is a brontosaurus and the other one is pizza? How well, does that work? Let's take a look at the app component template. Yeah, that was unexpected. So here we have our kingdom name. Right. And kingdom name here. These are both coming from the app component where we right. have Right, so basically we created the app component and an instance of this class was created and th these two values are just coming from the same instance of the class. So it's the same property from the same instance of the class. So it made, makes sense that they will have the same value, like they both will be a brontosaurus. Um, but then what about the app mushroom? It's defined in the app component template, and the app component is a brontosaurus. So why did it get a pizza? So this app mushroom is the child component of app forest. So it looks up to app forest, or the injector looks up to app forest to find the value. You know what? I want to have a pizza now. Well, here you go. <laughs> the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So our app mushroom 
needed a kingdom service, but the injector didn't find it there. So it had to head up the element injector tree to App Forest, where it found pizza. So it just stopped looking. It didn't have to go any further. All right, I think I'm getting it. So basically, it doesn't look at a template. It looks at the DOM that was created as a result of rendering this template. And in this DOM tree, App Mushroom is actually a child of App Forest. And that's why it looks there and find the pizza. It doesn't matter where, in which template it was defined. It matters where it ended up being, which is inside the App Forest. Hmm. You're a smart yes. cookie. Cookie? Is that an expression? Smart, mm, smart cookie. cookie. I think you're just trying to tease me with the food. <laughs> it's a cookie. OK. So yeah, right, module injectors. So we saw the element injector tree. And when we started, we defined the kingdom service in our module. Uh, but you said there is also a tree there. How, how, how does that work? Let's play with modules and find out. All right. Okay. I like this approach. All right. So let's get rid of this stuff because we don't need that now. Uh, my favorite thing to do to delete code. <laughs> then we need to get rid of this provider. Just after thread. coping stuff from Stack Overflow. That's second on my list. <laughs> and then we need to create a new module. Yay, generator again. What will we call the new module? Flowers. Flowers go well with the forest, and they don't make me hungry. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, and I guess we want to have some component. Oh, we are going to import it to the app module so we can use it. So uh, I bet you got a snippet for that as well. Snippets for everything. Oh, you import. Oh, sorry, I'm wrong sorry. one. Um, too many snippets. No, I know. Um, yeah, let's start, next time just do like Shai did with the brain reading so you don't have to code. <laughs> Um, OK, and then we need to All go right, here. so we have the flowers module, and we are going to generate a component inside it so we can see what happens. Uh, how would Daisy? Uh, Daisy right? work? It's, Daisy works. It's a flower. Let's do Daisy. OK, so first we need to import. Yeah, so we are going to import the kingdom service, right? And then inject it, and then print the value. Oops. Don't get too excited get about so excited. the path. So excited. Okay. I'm so excited. I just can Oh, this is copyrighted. We can't see oh, it here. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, and I guess now we are going to print it in the Daisy works. Like which kingdom will the Daisy belongs to? Uh, How about um, this emoji? It's a sunflower. You know that. I do. I do. But let's let's make it be a, a Daisy for today. All right, okay. that's kind of a crazy Daisy. <laughs> All right, uh, Daisy lives in D. We are going to own in all the English <laughs> in D kingdom. Shalt it do? Um, yeah, so we have a, a Daisy and it lives in kingdom name. So I guess if we put it in the app, it will print T Rex because we defined uh, Oh, uh, that's right. It's not a known element. Let's see. You defined the component, but you forgot to do something, I think. Mm. Do you know what you forgot to do? Nobody? We have like, I mean, why do, do your bosses pay you if, <laughs> if you don't know that? I'll give you a hint. Um, yeah. It's in here. Yeah, so she defined it in the flowers module, but she had to export it so she could use it in other modules. Don't worry, I always fall for that. It's uh, yeah. So now we got something in the console, or is it just stack blitz? Yeah, I think it's just stack blitz uh, being slow. Um, let's try uh, this magic button. I don't know if it's going to work, or perhaps we are out of the internet. Starting dev server. OK, so we have the exports, and we import it. And this has nothing to do. So basically, AppDaisy is not recognized as a component. Do we forget that module? App, app module? Oh, that's right, yes. Thank you. Right, oh, we yeah, need yeah. to import yeah, it. Yeah. You are brilliant. Thank you so Yay. much. Claps to you. Yay. Oh, phew. 
and we got a PPP as a bonus. <laughs> okay. So. So yeah. So right now we see that uh, everything lives in the T-Rex um, kingdom. But what happens if we define a different kingdom for the flowers module? What do you think? Let's define a different kingdom. Let's provide some other value for the kingdom service here, and see what happens. Hmm. I wonder uh, which value are you, uh, which kingdom are we going to do now? Hmm. Something that has to do with flowers. How about men wrestling? That's weird. <laughs> Let's go for it. All right. <laughs> Works for me. So yeah, so as soon as we uncomment this line, I guess that we will see two T-Rexes. And then since the uh, daisy is inside the flowers, and flowers is going to provide uh, men wrestling, I guess we'll get men wrestling here, right? Yeah. Ready? Yes, I am ready. I was born. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's such an anticlimax. <laughs> All right, okay. and another anticlimax, like what? nothing happened. Did we have, did, did we miss something? We didn't miss anything. If we go over to the app module, and we'll, we'll see here that we're providing the kingdom service. Right, the kingdom service. T-Rex. Right, has the T-Rex, right? But we also provided it in the flowers module? Exactly, we, repro we provided it in two modules. And so when you do that, the parent module will take precedence. Hmm. Well, so if we remove it from the app module, what, what happens then? Ta-da! Interesting. So it seems like both modules have a, one injector, like they converge all the definitions into one injector. Um, and then for the service, it means that... That means there can only be one. Ooh. Oh, deep. Right? Yeah, but then I, I ask myself a question. If it works that way, then where the module injector tree, like, where does it exist? Well, would you like to try adding lazy loading? I like this. This, this is cute? so cute. Thank you for putting it oh, on the slide. You're welcome. Yeah, I feel like him right now. <laughs> No, that was a T-Rex. Uh, um, all right, so what happens when we do lazy loading? Well, does it change anything? Well, would you like to give it a try? Yeah, go ahead. You, you, you help yourself. All these people, everyone's looking. But I'm on stage. I know. Do you want me to live go this? On? <laughs> you have seen what happened before when we forgot to import, and this is lazy loading. It's OK. We've got this. Okay, I have, sni I will, I will I have snippets. Oh, you have snippets, right, right. So I'm all set. So let's see. So we go to the flowers module, and we want to make it lazy. So in order to do that, we first need, I hope you really hope you got a snippet for that. We hope we need to import the router module, um, because that's how we make modules lazy, using the router. And then we need to import it into our uh, ng module and provide it the raw definition, which basically says, what did you write in the snippet? OK, so whenever this module is lazily loaded, we simply load the daisy component. So whenever this model goes lazy, we load the daisy on a day so hazy to make injector go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> on stage poetry. <laughs> All right, and then next um, we go to the app module and we use the snippet again. We also need a router, so many imports. Uh, we also need a router module here. Actually, we are in the UK, so should we say router module instead? We also import, uh, define the routes for the router module in the UK. So basically, whenever um, we go to slash flowers pass, we want it to lazily load the flowers module. Um, and then we don't need it on the import list anymore. It was so tough to find that we needed it. Uh, and back we are. Updates is not known element. What do we do now? I think you probably need to use that router and head over to the template. Right, so uh, since we now lazy load the daisy component, um, we need to uh, display it using the router or router. 
Um, and for that, I see you got a button snippet. We have um, two buttons. One button will take us to the flowers module, and the other one will take us back to the um, app component module. And then we have a router outlet. So as soon as I hit the load flowers module, um, the daisy component will be displayed here because the flowers module will be loaded lazy, which will cause to display the daisy. Um, so, and the daisy will tell the name of the kingdom. And what would that name be? What do you think? A T-Rex or a man wrestling? T-Rex? Man wrestling? So if you already know, why did you come to our talk? <laughs> No, actually, it resulted in an error. Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uncode. A typo? Typo in the? Flopwares. <laughs> I should have guessed we shouldn't <laughs> flopwares. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. I really admire you. So we are going to, but you already know the answer. So do the drum wall just to make a drama. And another error, yeah. So, another? yeah, I don't know why. Uh, we probably have another typo here, but I think this um, also means that uh, you already know the answer. It would show the men wrestling. And luckily, we got it covered in the slide, so. Yes. So if you have just feature modules that are eagerly loaded, you'll have one injector. But if you're using lazy That's load, what we did at first. That's right. And then when we lazy loaded our modules, we would get a new injector for each one of them. That's those. what we try to do now. Now do try it at home. <laughs> so uh, the injector looked up the element injector into the element injector tree first, where the daisy was for the kingdom service, but it didn't find it. Yeah, right, because we removed all the um, injectors, like all the providers from the components. That's right. So then it had to go over to the module injector tree to look for the kingdom service, where it should have found our men wrestling. But it didn't. It didn't, right? Yeah. And but what if there was no men wrestling defined there? Like, what if we didn't provide kingdom in the flowers module? Then the injector would have to continue up the module injector tree. So this is where the module injector tree comes into play, when you have lazy loading, and only when you have lazy loading. Yeah. So basically what, what I can take from here is that we have an element injector, which we search first going up, and then if we don't find a dependency there, we look at the module, the lazy module, where the component was defined, and when we start looking from there, going up the module tree. That's right. So there's a search order. First, we go through the element injector tree. In case of lazy loading, like you just said, the module injector tree. That's what I've just said. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, takeaways, yeah. What, what do we want you to take away from here? Pizza and? That there are two injector trees. Yeah, so there are two injector trees, but I think the more important takeaway is how Kapuna Hela and, and I were exploring this. Like, when we prepared the talk, we knew there were injector trees because Mishko told us about us, but we had no idea how they worked. And we started reading the documentation, but apparently we found it much easier to go into Stack Blitz, create a new Angular app, start doing crazy things, getting error messages, and as you all proved, you know how to fix those error messages. Don't use flopwares, use flowers. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> so go home now. Don't mind the lunch, don't mind the conference. Go no home now, experiment, <laughs> stack blitz, uh, Angular CLI, it's super easy and it's super fun. And when you find something new, just blog about it or come to speak about it. And we have a few more resources, um, including a blog post that contains all the examples from the talk. Um, but here is the link to the slides. I'm also going to post it on Twitter in a, in a moment, and you will be able to find everything there. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Yay! Yay, we are 30 seconds early, so you have more time for food.